Have you ever wondered if there's a way for all your old cams to come in handy in your modern day live streams, calls, and videos? Well, this is my old 8mm Sony Handycam, originally manufactured in May of 2000. And today I'll show you how to easily use this analog camera with an HDMI capture card to capture some authentically rad vintage vibes. And this whole process begins with this analog to HDMI adapter that I found on Amazon. There are a million different versions of these, so I think if you just get the cheapest one that has decent reviews, you'll be fine. I will put a link to this exact one that I got down in the description, and I actually ordered a second one so that I can use a second old Handycam with my ATEM Mini. Basically what it is is a little tiny box that runs on USB power, and you connect your analog RCA inputs over here. You then have an HDMI cable that runs out into your capture card. And there's a little switch on the side as well that lets you choose between 720 and 1080p. Now this isn't gonna perform any miracles and make your no K camera look like 4K, but it can still upscale things to work with your existing 1080 or even higher resolution workflow. And remember, trying to get high resolution video out of these old cameras is totally not the point. That's the opposite of the point. What we wanna do is actually capture what these old school cameras look like. That's the fun of this whole process, at least I think it is. The adapter will come with an HDMI cable and then also a USB cable to power it. That's pretty much everything. Now I'm using mine with the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, which is an extremely over the top thing to have just in general. However, you can use this with any HDMI capture card. So even something like an Elgato Cam Link would work great. The reason I love the A10 Mini is because it does let you switch between different sources. And that's actually how this whole idea got started. When I upgraded to the A10 Mini Extreme ISO, it has eight inputs and I don't have eight cameras, so I started looking around for all of my old analog cameras or you know, digital cameras that still take tapes that are pretty much just sitting on shelves as decorations at this point or sitting in boxes not being used. And I thought, maybe there's a way that I can breathe some new life into this old gear. And you'll be happy to hear that I was able to do exactly that. And this looks super weird, by the way, because it's the old Handycam video, but with the audio from the Rode VideoMic Pro NTG, so it's like sort of mind melting in a weird way. Can I use the audio from the Handycam? So if I'm not mistaken, this now should be the audio from the Handycam. So now you're seeing and hearing late 90s, early 2000s technology. Welcome back to my middle school years. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to modern times. It's nice to have you here. And once you've got the converter plugged in and powered on before you connect your camera source, you're gonna see a blue screen pop up on whatever software you're using. In this case, I'm using Ecamm Live. And then you can let the blue screen nostalgia whisk you away to a time of four by three aspect ratios, low resolution, and be kind, rewind. Good life advice. And the HDMI signal you're using will include audio. But as someone who doesn't want to subject my audience to bad audio so they don't say adios to my video, I usually don't worry about connecting the audio cables and I stick with just using the yellow video cable. That way, I can keep using the high quality audio from my modern equipment with the old visuals from the old analog cameras. Super fun, super weird, kind of melts your mind because it looks bad and sounds good, just like me. And another benefit to using these older camcorders is that even though the batteries might not be in great shape anymore because they could have deteriorated over time, they usually came with AC power adapters. So you can plug it into the wall. That's what I have this camera running on right now. And then it will just run basically forever. And it's perfect for streaming and for long form video and stuff like that. And in this case, this is actually my 2005 Handycam, which is technically a digital camera, but it's still recorded to mini DV tapes. However, it's a little more futuristic because it had the ability to natively shoot in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Even the flip out screen is 16 by nine. My old eight millimeter Handycam, which is the one that 
you know, I made all of my like high school student films on and stuff like that it was a four by three aspect ratio, but it does, as do a lot of these older cameras, have the ability to switch on an option to do 16 by nine wide, which on the camera's display makes everything look squished. But when you're looking at it, it actually conforms to 16 by nine in your final output. So again, it works great with more modern cameras and modern technology and, and stuff like that. And even though I'm using this adapter with my old camcorders, it's important to remember that it is just an analog converter. So it will take any RCA red, yellow, green, green, red, yellow, white connectors and convert them to digital. That means this can actually work great with something like an old VCR. So if you wanted to play back old VHS tapes as part of a current video or live stream or conference call or something, you could actually do that. You could have tape sources in your current streams. And that actually brings me to another point beyond live streaming, there's another really great use for these converters. A while ago, I made a video about how to convert your VHS tapes to digital using the Elgato video capture card, which is still a great option if you're starting from scratch. It's a converter, it's a higher quality converter, and then it also includes some software that lets you import your tapes and all your old stuff and save them digitally. It works great definitely recommend that. But if you're already using streaming software like Ecamm or OBS, and you've already got this converter, you can actually then put a tape in your camera or put a tape in your VCR, play that back, and then record it in Ecamm or OBS. And that way you can actually then easily convert your old analog tapes which is a really, really worthwhile project if you've got boxes of tapes just sitting around kind of rotting away. This is probably more information than you need to know, but I spent about six months doing that with all of my own tapes a few years ago when I made the video that I mentioned earlier. And I'm really glad I did because even though I still have the tapes, you can watch them on an iPad and stuff like that. And last summer, my dad passed away and that sucked. And when that happened, it was really cool to have all of those old videos like on my iPad. I could just sit on the couch and rewatch things and hear his voice and see him and easily send that to family members and stuff like that. It was absolutely amazing and totally worth the cost of the time and the equipment to save those memories that could have been lost forever otherwise. And since this setup is not designed specifically to save old tapes and record that way, You'd probably have to run some experiments using whatever software you're using to see if you can get decent quality for audio and video, but it shouldn't be too difficult. And like I said, it's totally worth the effort and the time you put into it. And if you're watching this video and you wanna give this a try, but you don't have a working old school or analog camcorder, there are a bunch of them on eBay that are still in working condition for really, really cheap and affordable prices. For like one or $200, you can get Pretty neat old cameras that really don't have a lot of use for people anymore. But now instead of all that cool gear just sitting there doing nothing, you can get it, put it to use and give it a second life. And as someone who grew up with this kind of technology, I think it's amazing that it can still be used in some way today. So now that we've gone through this and breathed some new life into your old camera, let's breathe some new life into your live streams with this amazingly helpful playlist of all kinds of live stream tips and tricks. So check that out and I'll see you in one of those videos.